This is the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast. We have assembled the world's finest sports and trivia dorks to prove once and for all that we are just as bad at this as we were at sports. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast, sports trivia for those of us who rode the pine. I am your host, Eric, and today's game will be pitting the Benchwarmer team of Scott and Josh. I think that's what we decided. Uh, versus bench warmer Marcus and kind of newcomer return. I don't I don't know how to word it because um, he's been on before, but he's not. So if you're not a patron, you probably haven't heard of him. So we'll say newcomer uh, David Wirtz. Uh, welcome, kind of back, uh, David. Why don't you let everyone know who you are, where you're from, who you root for, and uh, do you follow Dan Vogelbeck's OnlyFans page? Well, yeah, yeah. Hello. First of all, absolutely I do. If you uh, look, I, this is one of many autographed items of Dan Vogelbach behind me. So, uh, you know, definitely got to show the love for the big dudes out there. Him and Todd Coffee, Love them. Um, uh, I'm a from Cudahy, Wisconsin. So just south of Milwaukee, I do a bunch of really stupid stuff to, for a living. So I Initially work as a uh, improv comedian and teacher. Uh, I also work as a professional wrestler around the Midwest as well. Uh, and then, you know, the most wholesome things I work with special ed uh, children. So, you know, just wrapping it all up into one big bow that basically equates to I have no life. Uh, but it's truly tremendous and I'm happy to be on here. Well, we are happy to have you on an official game. Yeah, fast breaks aren't uh, aren't exactly the same. I, I heard it went well for you, though, so... Uh, that it did. Hopefully this goes just as well. And you'll be teaming up with Marcus. Marcus, how are you, sir? Good. Um, I hope it goes well for, for Dave, too, because uh, I, I helped him out a lot, which I think is why he picked me, so hopefully I don't disappoint him and uh, sink his his regular game debut. But uh, I'm doing well. I mean, we're in the throes of March Madness, and it has truly been madness. And I just love it. Like, every year, it feels like you're like, oh... March Madness is coming up. I kind of forgot about it. And then you start with conference tournaments, and then it's just like, oh, man, this is the best. It's so fun. And especially with all the chaos that's been going on this year, it's been great. And because of that, we are going to be uh, – uh, Dave Dave started with our team name. I workshopped it a little bit. Um, but we got March Madness on the brain, so we're going to be going to be tonight fairly kicked in our Dickinson. Beautiful. And uh, March Madness is just superior for betting too. So you know Ugh. anybody doing that, it's just it's it makes it so much fun. Anyway, and now we're gonna shoot over to uh, Josh and Scott. How are you boys doing? Uh, doing well. Um, I I guess I should be glad that there isn't legal betting in Minnesota yet for me, so I didn't have to. Although I probably would have bet on the Owls. Uh, my adopted team, because obviously I'm a Golden Gopher fan, and they didn't sniff any tournaments because they were terrible this year. But, uh, but yeah, no, uh, you know, since my whole who thing uh, and Owls, I have adopted FAU as uh, kind of one of my uh, adopted teams. So I have an adopted team in the Final Four, and that's pretty exciting. So I'm rooting for them, and. I mean, it's a four, five, five, and nine. So being the nine seed isn't that crazy against fours and fives. So we'll see what happens. Yeah, uh, I'm also good. Um, don't really have much to add except for that, Dave. I feel like your real life is like my fantasy life. Improv comedian and wrestler? Are you kidding me? Um, I know what I want to be when I grow up now, and it's uh, Mr. Dave Wirtz. Uh, but yeah, you like making twenty five thousand a year. So <laughs> uh, I mean. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Do what makes you happy, kids. Do what makes you happy and, and marry up. All right. Anyways, um, yeah, so our, our team name, uh look, I'm I'm gonna support my teammate Josh here, um, and this incredible run for Ford Atlantic. Um, and just kind of jump on that that train. Um, so tonight we're going to be I will be there for you. All right. As soon as Dan's done with his illegal substance over there, where he'll read the rules for us. Go ahead, Dan. The game will consist of four quarters of play, each with different trivia style. The styles of quarters one through three will change from show to show, and I will explain them as we go along. 
Like any good sporting event, we will have a halftime show after the second quarter with entertainment questions. And in the fourth quarter, our teams will wager from their points accumulated to see who are today's clipboard captains to be honored like the true bench warmers they are. All right, let's get this game underway. What did he lace his whiskey with? (laughs) Meth. Yeah, and he kept saying whiskey. It was really (laughs) off-putting. All right, today's first quarter will be Flop, Turn, and River. Flop, Turn, and River. For this quarter, there will be three questions consisting of five clues. The first three clues will be given before the teams decide if they want to check in with their guests. The last two clues will be given one at a time, with teams deciding if they want to check in with their guests after each subsequent clue. If a correct answer is checked in after the first three clues, the team will receive 50 points. After the fourth clue, 30. And after the fifth clue, 20. We'll take another clue. Okay, good. <laughs> good. <laughs> we'll just take all the actually just get us right to the river all right that it, it'll be way easier once we do that so um so since a lot of people enjoyed it i've done it twice so let's do it again we're doing same name flop turn and river so oh. i will give first names who liked this mason loved it and he's married so he makes great decisions so okay all right anyway so, question one for Flop Turn and River, same name, the flop. I have Daryl, Bruce, and Bob. We're checked in. All right, I will be there for you as checked in. That means fairly kicked in our Dickinson. I would love that name. Talk it out. Or ask for another clue. Um. Yeah, I think we need another one. I don't feel good about this at all. I don't know. I love Bruce Strawberry. Yeah. That's that was what I what I threw out there. I said Bruce Strawberry. That's interesting. <laughs> Bob Strawberry. That's that's yeah. definitely a secret agent somewhere. That, that's Strawberry. a wrestler. That's a wrestler name. Yeah. <laughs> Especially indie wrestler. Dave, I will volunteer myself to be your manager if I can go by <laughs> Bruce Strawberry. Bruce Strawberry. <laughs> and I only wear red suits. Yes, that's it. All right, what are you guys doing? Let's. I think we should take another one. Yeah, let's let's do. All right. We're going to take another one. All right. The turn. BJ. BJ. Uh, so what, what, what? Like Upton? Uh, is it Armstrong? Armstrong. Uh... I got nothing to go with the, the first three. Let's see. Okay. So we have BJ. We have Bruce. Daryl. Um, BJ. How many famous BJs can you think of? <laughs> I don't want to incriminate myself or expose my internet history. Uh, Armstrong was a bad, but Daryl Armstrong's basketball player, BJ Armstrong basketball player. Um, yeah, that that's the one that first like struck me. But I th- I think Bruce Armstrong was a football player. That 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 sounds like a lineman. All right. Um, do we want to chance it, or do you just want to get points on this and, <laughs> and add, take a take the last clue? And, and so we he can say Lance, and then we'll all be insanely upset at ourselves. Well, they won't because they checked in already, so they think they know the answer. Well, I'm I'm talking about us, us getting kicked in the Dickinson. So, oh well, yeah. I mean, do you want to? Ch- it's up to you. You're the guest. Check in, or do you want to take another one? Let's check in with Armstrong. All right, checking in Armstrong. Okay. And uh, I forgot your team name. I'll be there for you. What did you guys check in with? Well, we think it's actually Armstrong, so that's that sucks. Because <laughs> um, I forgot Daryl Armstrong won the sick man of the year for the Magic. Know your freaking host. Should have should have picked up on that. But we thought maybe uh, this was going to be Suter. So we checked in with Suter, but then I quickly realized I don't think there's two more Suiters to get to a turn in a river, but it was too little too late at that point. What are you talking about? There's like eight of them who are brothers in the There is a hockey. Suter for every day of the year. We got one on the Brewers, or we had one. That's that's true, Brent. And the river, let's see if it helps anybody. Trace. Yeah! Woo! There we go. Wait, is Trace, is Trace Suter not one of those hockey players? <laughs> not, not yet. 
Not yet. Um, so one team getting their points. The correct answer is, of course, Armstrong. Very nice, Marcus. Who's Bob Armstrong? Bob Armstrong is a uh, very, very old um, dead. No, I'm assuming he's dead because he's old. Yeah, he died in 2020, actually. A uh, professional wrestler. Hmm. Oh, Bob. Yeah, I, okay. I just I just didn't think you would go to to wrestling because I was like, yeah, Bull Bob Armstrong. But I was like, that's not that's not a thing. <laughs> Also known as the Alabama Jawjacker and the uh, the Georgia Jawjacker, so Alabama wasn't good enough. He's Road Dog's grandpa, right? Yeah, I think it's his. Well, actually, it might be his dad because Road Dog's older than. Yeah, I think it's his dad. I think it's his dad. Yeah, I uh, I met him. I met him in an Iowa at the Wrestling Hall of Fame, and he got so trashed <laughs> on a regular basis. It was tremendous. Like staggering that he could even function. Well, you know, it, it, between all the headshots, I, he might not have been drunk. He just could have been slurring his words naturally. But you know, that's that's what I'm guessing with. Ah, fair. All right. The road dog's father is Bob Armstrong. You okay. Correct. Yeah. Oh, cool. All right. Brings us to question two of Flop Turn River. Uh, for the flop, we have Brett, Devin, and Billy. I mean, who are we kidding, Josh? We need another clue. Yeah, uh, yeah especially after the debacle of that uh, first first one. Yeah. So we're going to take another clue. All right. Uh, fairly kicked in our Dickinson. Let, let's take another one. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Both teams taking the turn. And for this, we have Ahmad. All right. We are checking in. All right. Fairly kicked in our Dickinson. Checked in. That means the boys of Owl will be there for you. Can talk it out. Um, obviously, this is Rashad, right? You know Billy Rashad, <laughs> <laughs> Brett Rashad. Yeah, they're brothers, you know. Oh man, uh, I mean Ahmad's not that common, right? So isn't uh, isn't that the first? Is that Sauce Gardner's first name? It is. Bre- oh, Brett Gardner. They're, well, yeah, Brett Brett Gardner, Devin Gardner. I don't know, but Devin Gardner or Billy. Okay, maybe Ahmad Bradshaw. Bradshaw, Brett Bradshaw, Devin Bradshaw, Billy Bradshaw. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I think we should probably go for the last clue, Josh, because I think the closest we have is Gardner, and that's two of four names that we know fit. I don't really like those odds. Let's take another one. Yeah, we'll take the other one. All right. So the river should probably give it away. Rulon. Oh, so it is Gardner. It is Gardner. All right. Well, I've heard of some of those guys, at least. And we'll we'll check in with Gardner. Checking in with Gardner and fairly kicked in our Dickinson. Your answer, please. Yeah, Dave and I had a we had a feeling. Dave started off with Williams, and we both kind of were like, "Ah, eh, seems too obvious." And then I threw out Gardner because how can you forget Michigan quarterback Devin Gardner? And we just couldn't. We just neither of us were really knew anything about Billy Gardner. So we decided to take the extra one, and then as soon as you said Ahmad Sauce Gardner, we felt pretty confident. So that is what we checked in with. Both teams getting points on this. The correct answer is Gardner. See, everyone knows Devin Gardner. He handed off to, uh, I forget the guy that get lit up by Jadavian Clowney. Uh, Vincent Smith? Is that what it was? I thought it was somebody else. Uh, I, I forget I his name. He barely handed the ball off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and and I just remember him more specifically than others because he played quarterback. He wore the Gerald 98. Ford 98, and it was <laughs> the ugliest thing I've ever seen. All right. That brings us to question number three, the flop turn and river. Uh, and for the flop, we have Jordan, Lewis, and Dougie. All right, Eric, uh, we'll check in. Oh, my. Oh, fairly kicked in our Dickinson is kicking the owls right in their Dickinson. <laughs> you guys can talk it out for another 20 seconds before telling me if you want to check into. Well, the question is, do you feel comfortable enough with Hamilton? Jordan Hamilton sounds like someone. We know Lewis Hamilton's a guy. I don't yeah. think I know anyone named Dougie. So I don't, I don't know if that's going to help me at all throughout this entire question. I mean, we only know for sure one of three. We should probably take another name. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So the turn, Josh. Hamilton. That makes me think it's Hamilton still. All right, let's go with it. 
It's now two of four, which we had with Gardner. We had it with Gardner and we didn't take it. We went for the last clue. So you had it, you had that in your brain initially and Josh came up. I'd say we go with it. All right. We're going to check in with Hamilton. Okay. And over to fairly kicked in our Dickinson. What was your answer? Well, uh, I had to do about as much research as I could on ice hockey. And uh, one of the names that stuck out to me when I was looking through everything, I think he's, um, I think he's like a member of the Calvary, Calgary Flames is Dougie Hamilton. So we checked in with Hamilton. So we're going to go to the river for this to see if it is indeed Hamilton. Uh, the river for this is one rip. Mm-hmm. Well, it's either Hamilton or Torn. Good old Dougie Torn. <laughs> Torn. <laughs> <laughs> so both teams getting their points on this. The correct answer is Hamilton. And Dougie Hamilton played for the Flames. He is now in New Jersey. Tub. Who's Jordan Hamilton? There's two Jordan Hamiltons. Uh, there's a basketball player, first round pick, um, and also a soccer player, Canadian soccer player. Oh, so there's one. <laughs> yes, the Canadian soccer ah, player. One no, that no, one that no. Josh acknowledges. <laughs> <laughs> one that plays a sport. The other, I don't know what he does. All right. So after the first quarter, we have a score of I'll be there for you with 50 and fairly kicked in our Dickinson with a solid 110. We wanted to let you know that we are on Patreon if you'd be interested in supporting us financially. Your contributions will be used to help us cover the costs that it takes to bring you the high-quality sports trivia you have come to expect from us. There's also some great perks that come with the Patreon membership to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast, including bonus episodes and Benchwarmers swag. You can find us at patreon.com slash benchwarmersTP. Thanks. And that brings us to today's second quarter, which is going to be, uh, was it odd one out? Oh. The odd one out. For this quarter, there will be three categorized questions containing lists of six items. The teams will attempt to choose the item from the list that does not fit the given category. Each question is worth 50 points. No. Otherwise known as ooh. <laughs> there you go. You're an owl. You're supposed to say ooh. No, that, that's <laughs> a hot one out. It's o o o. Come on now. All right. So, uh, question one and odd one out. I don't even know how to say it, but I'm looking for the 1990s. Any how to say it? The 1990s NL home run leaders for the decade. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So the list is Mark McGuire, Dante Bichette, Sammy Sosa, Ryan Sandberg, Barry Bonds, and Larry Walker. Just to clarify, we're talking we're talking about total home runs, right? For the decade. No. Led the league for a season. Oh oh wait. What? Oh, yeah. wait. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that's not what I I apologize. I we no. Wait, so all of them uh, except one led the led the, led the league, league for a season ah, in the 90s. Ah, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh you feel good about that one, man? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, we're gonna oh. check in. Oh. I gotta right, give fair. this some different thought at the moment now. That that changed everything up. Fairly kicked into the Dickinson uh has checked in, so I'll be there for you. You guys can talk it out. Yeah, that completely threw off everything I was saying. Yeah, I, okay. You're welcome. Yeah, no, because I was like, oh, it's just NL for the decade. I'm like, McGuire played three years in the NL, but he hit like 200 homers in that span in his three years. <laughs> that was the conversation that we were having. Yeah, I, was yeah. like, I was like, McGuire, he was in the AL for a long time. He, so- yeah, he only got traded in 97. Right, right. Still, he hit like 200 homers. Yes. All right, Josh, so... We know McGuire led in 98, so he's good. I'm almost positive Sosa led in 99. I don't I don't think he did. Who I, uh, who did? McGuire, I think, was 99. I thought Sosa I, I think Sosa because Sosa Thanks. got to 60, and I think McGuire wasn't McGuire at like 54 or something in 99. 
I think 2000 is when Sosa led. Well, I think he got, I think he got the 60 in both seasons, I believe, but he definitely, you're right. He did lead in 2000 for sure. I don't, I thought McGuire led in 99, maybe 98. I, uh, definitely 98. Right. I know that. Right. Um, Larry Walker, it stands. Maybe he did in his MVP year in 97. That would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. Bonds. Man, uh, what year would he have led? That would have been while he's with the Pirates, probably. So, you know, so like in 90, earlier, so like in the earlier 90s when you didn't have to hit as many home runs to lead the, just like, yeah. and Sandberg isn't typically known for being a power hitter, but I'm guessing since he's on this list, he must have led it in the early 90s. I could see that. And I think, I want to say Bichette maybe led in 96 or 95 or 96, I think. Yeah, I'm I think sure Sosa might just be off the list because I think 2000 is when he... It, I, he definitely did in 2000. I just can't remember if he did back-to-back in 99 as well. I, but it, I think it, it certainly could have been McGuire. I think it was back-to-back McGuire in, eight, in 98-99. That's right, how I go, remember it. Let's go, let's go Sosa then. I'm, I'm right. good with that. Okay, we're going to check in with Sammy Sosa. Okay, and Fairly Kicked in our Dickinson, your answer. Uh I was feeling pretty positive once we got that clarity uh, that Sosa mm-hmm. is the odd one out because I think he started off the year leading it. And uh, Josh, you're right. I- I'm almost positive McGuire was 98, 99. So we checked in with Sosa. All right. So 1990, Ryan Sandberg did it. I don't have the number, but he did it in 1990. Uh, <laughs> 30. Like 25. <laughs> Uh, Bur- Bur- Burry Bonds did it in 93 um, then we have 1995 was one Dante Bichette 97 was Larry Walker and in 98 99 was Mark McGuire so Sammy Sosa did it in 2000 so not part of the list and is the odd one out okay um I just nice uh, I wanted to look it up quick me too uh I uh I did not give Ryan Sandberg enough credit. He had 40 home runs. All right. So, yeah, sorry, Ryan. You definitely had more power than I remembered. Ryan. <laughs> That's what I said, Ryan. He did. He did. Ryan. <laughs> Ryan. <laughs> All right. So that brings us to question number two, which you guys already saw the list. <laughs> Bonus points if you can tell me what I'm about to ask you. <laughs> um. Here we go. The what I want to know is who is the odd one out of quarterbacks with over 3,000 yards passing while playing for the NFC South? Yeah, so it's uh, Chris Sims, Drew Brees, Matt Moore, Kyle Allen, Brian Greasy, and everyone's favorite, Sam Darnold. I can take one off the list right away. <laughs> one off the list? That, that yeah. the list. Oh, okay. So Kyle Allen. All right. <laughs> Oh, oh my word. All right. We'll check in. All right. I'll be there for you. It's checked in. Fairly kicked in the dick and said, I'm going to need an answer. Uh, yeah, we were, we were coming to a conclusion too. And uh, I'm, I'm really feeling that Christian McCaffrey plays a big factor in this one. So we're going to check in with Kyle Allen. Okay. And I'll be there for you. What was your answer? Um, Kyle Allen was definitely one of the ones we were thinking about, but I thought he had one pretty good season where, I mean, I think he was only on their team for what, maybe two. I mean, he wasn't there for long, but I thought he started a, most of a se- most of a season. Um, but we couldn't recall more being much more than a backup for Carolina. Like, I think he started a handful of games, but I just, I don't think he would have gotten to 3000. So we checked in with Matt Moore. All right, so let's go in order here. Um, Drew Brees had 68,010 yards. Um, next, we have one Brian Greasy with 4,841 yards. Is smidge behind Drew Brees. Just nipping on his heels. Just right behind him. Um, then, with 3,670 yards, Sam Darnold. Yeah, that's right. And then we move on. With 3,588 yards, Kyle Allen. Ah. So that brings us down to two individuals. 
one of them with 3,087 yards and the other with 2,640 yards. Um, and the odd one out for this with 2,640 yards, Matt Moore. So Woo. one team getting their points. I was However, like, Sims had to because he started way too many games than he should have for Tampa. Moore <laughs> just, started just out of sheer volume. Matt Moore yeah. started more in the NFC in the South than probably everybody on that list except Drew Brees. Really? Yeah, he had his games. I'm sorry, games played. He had more games played in the South than most of them. Dang. Not by much, but but at least I want to say two or three more than everybody. I else. can't imagine he had more starts than some of the other guys. No, he just came in because Cam would get banged up. <laughs> Matt Moore would come in. I don't think they had him throw a lot when he would come into a game. That'd be my guess. All right, brings us to question number three. Kind of along the same lines, except we're going to go to a different division. Um, this is uh, which quarterbacks have thrown for 30 or more touchdowns while playing in the very prestigious NFC North. We, we have John Kitna, Teddy Bridgewater, Christian Ponder, Joey Harrington, Kyle Orton, and Rex Rex Grossman. You want to go with that? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, we're checking in. Barely kicked in our Dickinson has checked in, so that means that I'll be there for you. Talk it out. <laughs> so we think this comes down to the Vikings. Uh so yeah, I, and I actually So I pretty much deferred to you. Um I mean Christian Ponder was a terrible quarterback, but he actually had a he, the teams had some Six, they went to the playoffs one year. He led him to the playoffs. Well, let me say that again. Adrian Peterson with Christian Ponder as quarterback made the playoffs one year. But um, he 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 was on the he played for four seasons. He I yeah. think he had to have been thirty plus. I think Teddy because I like when I was thinking about it because he had two seasons where he was okay, and I think he threw like fourteen. 15 touchdowns in the two seasons and then he blew out his knee um before his third yeah. season and then yeah i i'm fine with that i mean I, 15 is a lot for him i would say in two seasons so yeah i i would think that he's like i said i think it was, i think it was 14 for each season i think yeah well, um, that's I, I don't think he hit 30 um, like I said, I think Ponder did just by being there for four years and there really wasn't, yeah. there really wasn't much other options on those teams because their backups I, were even worse. Which right. I don't, no, I don't I, know how that's possible, but their backups were worse. <laughs> so, all right. Yeah, let's do it. All right. We're going to uh, check in with uh, two gloves, Teddy. All right. And fairly kicked in our Dickinson. Um, yeah, we, Kind of initially, we when I kept saying, oh, I like that. It's because Dave and I were on the same wavelength. We kept typing the same thing at the same time. We both said, kind of seems like Teddy or Joey Harrington and injuries. Uh, we both talked about Teddy's injury history. And uh, so we ended up in the same spot and we checked in with Theodore Two Gloves, Teddy Bridgewater. All right. I will tell you this right now that I'll, I'll yell at you in a minute. Um so about Joe Harrington, yes, because yeah, he was there for way too long. To we're gonna that. we're we're gonna start at the top of the list with the most touchdowns while in the NFC North. Joey Harrington with sixty. All right, so keep his name out of your mouth. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, who's editing this? Dan, uh, Dan. Dan. Hey, Dan. Uh, beep in five, <laughs> four, three, two, one. F- Joey Harrington, that organ. F- that's that's two beeps in there. For Dan. Yeah, yeah, that's two, Dan. Just so you know, <laughs> nice and easy for you. That's called that's called being a good teammate, like Joey hey. Harrington. I, yes. I had the first part of that, Marcus. I was ready to say it with you. <laughs> <laughs> so next on this list with forty four touchdowns, John Kitna. I, I, I knew he had to be up there. Followed by Christian Ponder with thirty eight. Bringing us with 33 is one Rex Grossman. So we're down between Teddy Bridgewater and Kyle Orton. And with 28 touchdowns, Teddy Bridgewater. So both teams getting their points. 
there were people who loved Teddy up here. He he was he was fine. He was a fine quarterback before he got hurt. Fine. As a as a Packers fan, I loved everything he did. So thank you. <laughs> I just can't wait for you Packer fans to have to get back to what it's like to be a regular fan of regular teams who don't have 30 years of Hall of Fame quarterbacks. Oh, Look, really? I had said trade Aaron Rodgers two years ago. But that would have been you would have gotten more for him back then. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't help when now it's like okay, this is the team I want to play for. One team, trade me there. He's got no <laughs> say. I don't care. He'll, he'll end up in Minnesota eventually. No, in two no, years. He won't. Nope. Two years. Nope. Right. <laughs> no, sir. All right, so after the second quarter, the scores are quite a bit closer. We have fairly kicked a, kicked in our Dickinson with 210, and I will be there for you with 200. And that brings us to halftime. It is now time for the halftime show. There will be three entertainment questions pertaining to sports, with each question worth 25 points. Today's halftime will be about 90s cartoons. Okay, Scott, this is all you. Oh, I will give I that's will give cool. you that's cool. I, will, I will give you five characters and you tell me what cartoon they're from. So question number one. We have Haggis McHaggis, Kowalski, Stimpson, Muddy Mudskipper, and Stinky Whizzleteats. And while you guys think that out, I'll be right back. Put him in the chat. He, he didn't send it in the chat. So we need to figure out which which cartoon for each one, right? No, no, no I think this is all the same for cartoon. one. This is all. Oh, from then one. yes, Dave, absolutely, one hundred percent. It's yeah. There was one that triggered it for me immediately, and so I was literally typing the line into you. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish I could see them all again. That's so stinky something. Beefy McWhat now. What? No, Haggis McHaggis is what. I like Beefy McWhat now. <laughs> All right, that got it right. Beefy McWhat now. Right. That's gonna be on. That's gonna be on like the Burger King menu to help. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. <laughs> this might be your title. I don't know if that's good enough for Burger King, but maybe like a Carl's Jr. would would, would pick that up or something. All right, do we have answers? Oh Are yeah, we're ready. Good. All right, both teams checked in. Yeah, whatever. Um, so fairly kicked in our Dickinson. What was your answer? Uh, I could sing every last line of the Happy Happy Joy Joy song with Stinky McWhistle's feet. So this is Ren and Stippy. And I'll be there for you. Stimson J. Cat, a.k.a. Stimpy. Ren and Stimpy. All right, both teams getting their points. The correct answer is Ren and Stimpy. Uh, so let's move on to question number two. And this time I'll post the answers for you, Josh, or the questions, not Thank the answers. You. Uh, question number two, we have Dr. Buzzcut, Fungus, the Gromble, Ickus, and the Snorch. Okay, we are checking in. Fairly kicked in the Dickinson, checked in. I'll be there for you, maybe. Talk it out. What do you what do you got? Does anything stand out? No, not really. Okay, from like Ickus, Ickus and fungus. Those are both things that I I contracted on the playground as a kid. I don't know that that helps me in the, with this question though. The snorch, the grumble. Marcus, why does the snorch sound like one of the things from Waiting? That should have been like the name of one of the. One of their games. Um, I think it's. I think you're thinking of uh, rap producer Rob Snorch. Or, oh, I, mean, well, I mean Scott Snorch. Scott, Sorry, Scott, damn it! Scott, I screwed up my own joke. Damn it! Ah, oh, I'm so mad. Scott Snorch is what I was gonna say. Golly, yeah, good old Scott Snorch. <laughs> I, I initially thought I had something with the buzz cut, but I think there's another buzz cut. Well, in... first of all, don't disrespect him. He's a doctor. Uh, the one I'm thinking of is a coach. 
and uh, that well, would not be from the same because that was Beavis and Butthead had Coach Buzzcut. So that's why Buzzcut we, first jumped in. But what if Coach went back and got his PhD? I, I don't think there's a fungus, the grumble, ichus, and the snorch in Beavis and Butthead. Just saying. All right. Well, if, I, assuming Coach Buzzcut went back, became a doctor, maybe jumped to a different universe. Okay, what's one that would have a fungus, something called the grumble, ichus, and the snorch? No idea. I like they they don't sound like people, but I have no idea. No, no, they, they certainly sound like things. Uh, do you know any nineties cartoons that were uh, not about people but about things? Uh ah, uh, real monsters. It's okay, about things. Um. Could could those be monsters? Fungi the Gromble sounds like a monster. The Snorch could be a monster. That does sound, sound well, that sounds like a Dr. Seuss like type of like type monster, but yeah, <laughs> that could certainly be I, I have no idea. Let's go, let's go ah real monsters, because sure. we have no clue. All right, and over to Fairly Kicked in the Dickinson. Oh my gosh, that's so annoying. Did I did I get it? <laughs> no, did I get it? Yeah, you got it. That's so oh. stupid. We we're both sitting here just looking at each other like, ah, uh, easy. I watched an episode of the show two days ago because Paramount Plus has 90s everything and it yeah, rules so hard. And uh, and I'm correct in my assumption that I would have crushed Legends of the Hidden Temple because all these little dumb idiots suck. Um, anyways, we, we also checked in with Ah uh, Real Monsters. All right. <laughs> both, both teams getting their points. The correct answer is Ah. Uh, Real monsters. So that that um, was a thing, huh? Yes, I left oh, out. I, I left out cartoon. Oblina and Crumb. Uh, those yeah. wouldn't have helped me. I never heard of this show because I'm old. And, and Ren and Stimpy, you, you you hit me in a spot because I was, you know, what they were the same time later teenage. This was this was a few years after I graduated. Yeah, it was like from 97, high school in 93, 97. So. Yeah. I wasn't watching probably Ah Real Monsters, which was geared probably more towards elementary to middle schoolers. No, this was it was it was pretty good. It was not like one of those. It, it like, was. It wasn't like Rugrats. It, yeah, it was wasn't like that. Here, right underneath. So middle schoolers. Then it was. It was yeah. made for middle school. <laughs> it was like between Rugrats and Ren and Stimpy. It was like a happy medium of yeah, the. That's like that's like shows. middle school. Yeah. Yeah. So I. I Okay. Yeah. yeah, I was well past middle school when it was up. Right. <laughs> it it holds up. It holds up. Uh okay, I'll trust you on that. I'm All not right. gonna watch it. Well, obviously it holds up. Marcus just watched it two days ago. So exactly. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't hold up. Some of them, but <laughs> I just told uh, you that I watched an episode. I love it. It's Anyways. a good show, but there were some episodes where I was like, oh boy. <laughs> All right, let's move on to question number three. The five characters I have for you are Strong woman, Jesus, Santa Claus, <laughs> Satan, and everyone's favorite, Miss Chokes on Dick. We can check in. Fairly kicks in the tickets and has checked in. I'll be there for you. Can talk it out. Sounds like, uh, talk this out, sounds like South Park, right? Yeah, we don't we don't need to talk this. I, out. I know that at least three of them are definitely south in South Park. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna check in with South Park. All right, and uh, fairly kicked in the Dickinson. Um, Marcus, can you sing the Strong Woman song, please? No, I will not. But I do want to ask Dave, who's your favorite uh, character on South Park? Uh, as of late, I can't get enough of PC Principal. Like <laughs> he's he's a good yeah he's a good one. Uh, yeah. For me, it's Randy Marsh. The, the hands down, it's not close. That to it, me, it really is. Well, Thanks. Gotta, like I always bro- broaden it out too, you know. Yeah, unlike, yeah. Unlike some city walk fun as well. <laughs> yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, yes, we also checked in with South Park. All right, both teams getting their points. The correct answer is South Park, and I'm assuming by the time this comes out, uh, the Triviality South Park episode, which I am doing, I believe Marcus, you'll be there too. Uh, will be coming out as well after halftime. We have a score of fairly kicked in the Dickinson at 285, and I'll be there for you, still behind by 10 with 275. We'd like to take a minute to invite you to follow us on Facebook, 
Instagram, and Twitter at BenchwarmersTP. We also have a Facebook group for fans of the pod called The Bench. Join us there to comment on the latest episodes and share cool sports facts and trivia. If you'd be willing to rate and review us on iTunes or Stitcher, we'd greatly appreciate the support so that other people may find this podcast. Thanks. And that brings us to today's third quarter, which will be lucky seven. Lucky seven. For this quarter, there will be three lists containing seven items. The team that is trailing coming into the quarter will choose the first list and attempt to identify the items on this list one at a time. If the team has an incorrect guess, the other team can attempt to finish that list out. The team leading at the beginning of the quarter will select the second list, and whichever team is trailing after the first two lists will get the third list. Each item is worth ten points. Oh, you're in a pretty good spot. Nice, nice. Potentially, we'll see. It's, it's, hey, we like at least get hockey. to pick the first list. I feel like there's some hockey stuff coming. No well, hockey, no hockey coming in these three lists because these are all three similar lists so you'll just have to decide which year you want because since 1990 there have been three seasons where only seven players have rushed for a thousand yards once in 1991 2015 and 2021 so i will want the top seven rushing leaders from 1991 2015 (laughs) and 2021 (laughs) oh no this is diabolical. You are a monster. Okay. So, uh, I'll be there for you. Ooh. Which year do you want? Oh, this sucks. 91, 2015, <laughs> and 2021. Josh, I actually wish that we weren't trailing because we're going to get stuck with 1991. <laughs> hey, remember, Either, I like... was in high school in 91. I might be able to come up with some of that list. So just all right, fair enough. Uh, but I think it's probably smart to start with 2021, right? I would think so. All right. Yep. So that's that's what we're gonna choose for this one. All right. Get your list together. All right. Yep. We're ready to check in. All right. Fairly. Nope. I will be there for you. Who's checked in? Let's hear your list. Nice. Start with uh, Jonathan Taylor. With 1,811 yards, Jonathan Taylor is number one. Joe Mixon. With 1,205 yards, Joe Mixon is number two. Or three, I'm sorry, three. Nick Chubb. With 1,259 yards, Nick Chubb is number two. Uh, Najee, Najee Harris, however you pronounce his first name, Harris. With an even 1,200 yards, Najee Harris is number four. Delvin Cook. With 11.59, Delvin Cook is number five. Okay. Uh, Derek Henry. Derek Henry has 937 yards oh my God. in 2021. So he is not in the okay. top seven. So that leaves number six and number seven for fairly kicked in the Dickinson. Ooh, wow. I haven't even thought about this a whole lot because I, I thought you guys were going to run this. Um, The five were pretty easy after that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, what do you what, say? What are you seven. thinking? Huh? Uh, six and seven were left. Yes. Okay. Um, for, first one that I think of is Zeke because this is still decent Zeke period. They're probably. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm good with that. All right. Um. Yeah. Let's uh. Let's let's say Zeke Elliott. With 1,002 yards. Oh, wow. Zeke Elliott is number seven. Oh, no, oh number seven. Oh, my God. I, I Honestly, I still would have thought there was one left. Well, there is one left. Oh, no, no, like behind him. Oh. 
At a thousand, even. Well, I think I think I might know it only because I drafted him a bunch, and then there was a story that happened, and a guy uh, got shot and then came out to many men, and everybody was all about it, and I couldn't figure out why they wouldn't give a guy who had a thousand yards the ball. So I think that the other one is Antonio Gibson for for the commanders. Because inexplicably, they just decided to stop giving him the ball. I'm not sure why, but they just stopped doing it. And I'm, th- I'm, I'm pretty sure he was like right there. Yeah, I, w- I wasn't exactly paying attention to Washington commanders offense. Um, so sorry, I, sorry. At that point, you're right. It was football team. That was football Just team. Yeah. Football team. Um, <laughs> but even so, I wasn't watching. I wasn't watching them for the offense. Uh, their defense was fun, but yeah. I, I look, uh, if you if you feel confident on it, I say go for it. Okay, we're gonna check in with Antonio Gibson. With 1,037 yards, Antonio Gibson is number six. Nice pull. Yeah, great pull. Woo! He didn't even cross our mind. Guys, nope. right on the guys right on the outside with 918 yards. You had Melvin Gordon, 928 yards. Damian Harris, Derrick Henry had 937, and with 963, you hit Elijah Mitchell. So that means fairly kicked in the Dickinson. You get to pick your next your the next list here. You have 1991 and 2015. <laughs> um. We will go with 2015. All right, you got five minutes to put a list together. I think I think we're good then. Yes, check in. All right, fairly kicked in the Dickinson. Dickinson has checked in. Um, hit me with your list. All right. Uh, so I think the first one we feel like almost certain is Adrian Peterson. With 1,485 yards, Adrian Peterson's number one. And uh, as as Marcus said in our chat, primetime muscle hamster, um, Doug Martin. With 1,402 yards, Doug Martin is number two. And then uh, another sneaky one that Marcus threw out there, uh, I th- was it with the Jets, was Chris Ivory. With 1,070 yards, Chris Ivory is number five. Okay. Uh, Another one that we had is uh, Latavius Murray. With 1,066, Latavius Murray, number six. And um, we also had Devontae Freeman. With 1,056, Devontae Freeman is number seven. Okay. Who's that lead left? The, three your, your three last... and four are still available. Oh, we have two. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we still got them. Yeah, okay. Uh, Todd Gurley. With 1,106, Todd Gurley is number three. All right. We this, is all, this is this is all you, man. <laughs> this is gonna oh. be a banger if you pull this off. I'm ugh, man. I, again, I I I seem to remember that for Latavius Murray to take over, you had to send Darren McFadden to the Cowboys. So Darren McFadden with 1,089 yards. Darren McFadden <laughs> is number four. You gentlemen completed the list. <laughs> You guys, I'm saying this because we have a lot of very smart people that came on this podcast. That was mostly Dave. He just crushed that list. I added Chris Ivory, and you had a lot of that list, man. That was good. I had I had Ivory and Freeman were my contributions to that list. You you felt pretty good about the rest of that. That was awesome. <laughs> I didn't think about McFadden because of Lata- You know, for the I was thinking Raiders. This is about the only uh, Madden I ever owned. So, like, <laughs> well, after sweeping that list, that means I'll be there for you with 325 to fairly kicked in the Dickinson's 375. You guys will get the last list. 
1991 mm. rushing leaders. Oh, um, what about and then maybe that one? Do you, is that your order of confidence? I don't, I don't know if I. I, I considering those are the only solid names so far. Of, of the, the names, yeah, of the you, names. Okay, if that's the order you like, yeah, sure. I think that's the order I would. Uh, okay, I, I'm, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. All right, I'm going to need an answer from you, gentlemen. I don't know if I have a seventh. I don't know that we're going to get there, so I, I think we'll. That's cross a that good bridge point. That's a good point. If, I'm if, trying if to come up with seven, it. but let's not worry about it unless we get there. <laughs> yeah. All right. Now we're ready to check in. All right. I'll be there for you. Checking in. Hit me with your list. Emmett Smith with 1,563 yards. Number one, Emmett Smith. Barry Sanders with 1,548. Barry Sanders, number two. Yeah, we decided to start with the deep cuts, guys. Yeah, yeah. I know you won't refer to this guy either. Thurman Thomas with 1,407. Thurman Thomas, number three. Okay. Uh, we're going to go the Nigerian nightmare, Christian Okoya with 1,031 yards. <sighs> Christian Okoye is number seven. Okay. I got to get back to my list. Um, Rodney Hampton. With 1,059, Rodney Hampton is number four. Okay. Ernest Biner. With 1,048, Ernest Biner, number five. Okay, well, uh, Scott, <laughs> we didn't think we'd get here, so uh, they were all in there. Um, uh, we didn't really have too many other names. No, we had we had a couple names of people we knew it wasn't like I. So I just don't think Marcus Allen, towards the end of his Oakland days, I don't think he was getting the the big yards anymore. No, I I I wouldn't think so. So yeah, I. I mean, I can say one that I know was on a team that didn't quite get there, but that's Herschel. Right, or we could, we could, we could throw out a lucky do, uh, something. That's always fun. Okay, what do you, what lucky, what do you want to send out? Uh well, we've got a Smith in here already with M. Uh we could throw out like a Williams or a Jones. Yeah, I don't even know. Were there? I'm not even thinking. I mean, I, whatever. I. That's better because, like I said, I know Herschel didn't get there. So, yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't have anything. All right, else. what do you got? You want to go Williams? Sure, Williams, Harvey Williams, uh, just Williams. Okay, well, he's not on the top <laughs> at all. He's not even in the top eleven. So, I no, mean, I thought that was an accountant. So. No. Um, so we can go over to Fairly Kicked in the Dickinson. Do you know number six? We had a really... Yeah, Harvey Williams, didn't he have a really long neck? He did. He was like yeah. a Merton Hanks of running yes, backs. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> I remember how freaking his long his neck was. Like a like a dinosaur. Yes. Anyways, um, they named all of our, our names. We had fun little chat. Um I swear to God, I had more Rodney Hampton cards than any one human should have. So I knew he was on this list. I was hoping. I was like, oh, maybe they want to think of Rodney Hampton and I'll get to swoop in here. <laughs> Dave's shaking his head. Um, well, I also know uh, I'm shaking my head for what's to come. With, uh, ah, yes. Number seven. Yeah, yeah, we'll get there. I don't think this is right. But when we were just trying to think of, much like you guys, we had the same list. And then it was, what is this seventh name? Who don't know what it could be. And But I know that Eric has an affinity for some guys. And I said, to Dave, Eric Ede has a hard on for Marion Butts. And then we decided that if we could change our team name or the next time, it would be hard on for Butts. And then when we were doing a little bit more discussion, I said, I say we go hard in on butts. So we're checking in with Marion butts. So 
he is the reason I did this list. But no! that's outside oh, no! of the top seven. Marion Butts had 834 yards, bringing him at, in at number 10. Um, nine yards ahead of one player I already mentioned at 11 was Herschel Walker. At nine, we had Mark Higgs with 905 yards. 959 that's, that's yards. Cool. 959 yards brings you to number eight, which is one Leonard Russell. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would have been a good lucky, a lucky no Russell. Yeah. And a lucky guess may have gotten you here. If you think lucky, what color do you think of? Oh, green. Green would have got you the answer because oh. at number six, with 1,037 yards, you had Gaston Green. Gaston Green? Hmm. No. We've talked about him on this podcast before because we were like, who runs the ball like Gaston? <laughs> Gets tough yards like Gaston. Oh, that's that's truly tragic because I was Gaston oh. in, a, in a live music. Once. Oh, you didn't remember wait, Gaston Green? Wait, wait. Come on, dude. There's a musical know. about Gaston Green? Wait a second, Dave. I need to know more about this. <laughs> I was born in 92. This list was was already set against me here. So after the third quarter, we have a lead change for the first time. Barely kicked in the Dickinson has 375 and squeaking past them. Gaston Green would have tied it up, but I'll be there for you has 385. Good thing I'm an old guy. Yeah, seriously. I, now, I, mean, I, I, I gotta heard give, of all seven. I've heard Scott, of I gotta give you a, I gotta give you a, an assist um, for the Rodney Hampton. The Rodney, yeah. I knew you said Otis Anderson, and I was like, I knew he was, was towards the end guy. of his career, and I was like, wait, wasn't Rodney Hampton on that team? Yeah, I knew it was the Giants guy. I just yeah. didn't it, know which Giants guy was. It truly was like we really struggled with what to give you because I know you were obviously you know more aware of sports back then i mean i just know it through just research and bull- but you right. were actually you know i, I was paying a fully functioning that, human being you, you were playing, there i was three te- you was playing tech mobile <laughs> right yeah you were there yeah that oh. brings us to today's fourth quarter the fourth quarter known as put your fours up This quarter consists of four categorized questions that teams will wager up to 100 points each, not to exceed their current point total. The categories for today are as follows. Question one, we have Ice Ice Baby, which is the NBA. Question two, we have Who Let the Dogs Out, which is going to be football. Question three, How Bizarre which is going to be bonehead plays. And question number four, I want to be bad, which is a question about tanking. It is now time for the teams to place their wagers. Now that the wagers are in, on to the questions. Question number one of the fourth quarter, category ice, ice, baby. Go ahead, sing it. Go. No? All right. Did it all right. In the twenty in the twenty twenty three NBA season, as of today, uh, March twenty sixth, there has been sixteen game winning buzzer beaters. What player is the only player to have multiple game winning buzz- buzzer beaters this season? One while tied versus Toronto, and the other while down by one versus Chicago. He is a first round pick in the twenty twenty two NBA draft, making his debut twenty three years after his father, who has the same nickname as his son's current team. All right, we're going to check in. All right, I'll be there for you as checked in. That means fairly kicked in the Dickinson. You guys got about 20 seconds to talk this out. All right, so we have two names (laughs) of guys that we know have dads (laughs) that played in the NBA. I love when that's the criteria. I think they all have dads. I'm just saying, whoa, I don't think you whoa, can exist. Whoa, I don't, don't think you can exist without having. You're father. correct. Okay, you know what I mean. Dads that played in the NBA. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Um, okay. Two that we're thinking of, and I feel like 
I think I like your answer better from the nickname standpoint. Uh, I mean, both of them work as far as nicknames, right? Well, I mean, we can we can talk this out, right? Yeah. So, right. So, so my thought was my initial thought was Jabari Smith. His dad played against LeBron. That's a big thing. Oh my god, my dad played against you. Oh, I think you're cool too, bro. Give me a hug. Um, all that stuff that the NBA does now instead of actually hating each other. Um, but AJ Griffin, I kind of forgot about him, and you brought that up. Yeah, um, like I said, I just had to start at the top of that draft order and work my way down. And I remember his dad, Adrian, but. I, I like Hawk as a nickname better than Rocket. <laughs> Jabari the Rocket Smith. I would remember that. I feel like. I don't know. That sounds better to me. I just like your answer better, and I kind of forgot about AJ Griffin. So yeah. I think we should do that. All right. Then lock it in. Okay. We're going to check in with AJ Griffin for 100 points. And over to I'll be there for you, your answer and wager. Yeah, we were kind of struggling thinking of people. I quickly thought about Jabari Smith just because, again, yeah, we know about the dad thing. But then trying to think, like, to call up power forward that barely played the Rocket, I felt like it didn't make sense as a nickname for him. So I And to be honest, Jabari Smith Jr., like, I don't recall him hitting any buzzer beaters this season. So I was kind of like, I I don't like that. But then I remembered someone who I knew at least hit one. And I I do remember, I think one was kind of recent. Um and he also had a dad that played in the NBA. And then when I said the name to Josh, Josh said Hawk makes sense for a Griffin to be a nickname, which I didn't even think about, but that totally makes a lot of sense. So we also checked in with AJ Griffin for 100 points. All right. Both teams getting points on this. The correct answer is AJ Griffin. Um, not much to add because you guys kind of already talked about his father enough. Uh, so let's move on. No need for a score update. You guys are still down by 10. All right, on to question number two uh, in the category of who let the dogs out. The Georgia Bulldogs have had five players named to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. However, only two of those five players are also named to the College Football Hall of Fame. Name either. Cool. Go with it. All right, we're checked in. All right, I'll be there for you. Has checked in. Fairly kicked in the Dickinson. Chalk it out. Yeah, we were we were right about there. Um, we know Richard Seymour just got elected. We threw that around, but weren't really positive about how. I just don't remember him collegiately what he was like as far as awards, because that's what a lot of it comes down to, right? If you were an All American multiple times, that's kind of the criteria for the College Football Hall of Fame. Yeah. And I'm trying to think of just players altogether. Like what Terrell Davis too. Right. But he was a sixth round pick. I, he wasn't, yeah. he wasn't highly thought of coming out of Georgia. Um, And I was thinking like stench comb, but I don't think they no, were, not, they, they wouldn't have gotten there in the NFL. Um, yeah, not, I think you're right. Yeah. But I, but I landed on champ Bailey uh obviously pro football hall of fame and when you're a heisman candidate as a defensive player you play offense it kind of makes sense so are you good with that dave yeah i like it a lot okay we're gonna check in with champ bailey for 100 points okay and over to i'll be there for you answer and wager we had all the same exact names in addition to uh josh's friend tarkenton which he believes is probably the the second one um mm-hmm. but we just ended up going with the one that i think i felt most likely would be in the college football hall of fame for all the reasons marcus just laid out so we also checked in with champ bailey for 100 points the one name that did not come up at all is charlie trippy he was inducted into the pro football hall of fame in 1968 and into the college football hall of fame in 1959 um the other answer here was said, but not picked. Um, so unfortunately, neither team getting points because the second player is Fran Tarkenton. Um, Champ Bailey is not in the College Football Hall of Fame. Oh, wow. That's very surprising. 
two way player who yeah was a Heisman finalist. I is, I it's I thought Champ got in last year. As of right now, updated based on their Wikipedia page, the last inductee into the College Football Hall of Fame is David Pollock. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Like Champ Bailey's Pollock. Wikipedia. Does it say he's in there? It says he's in the College Football Hall of Fame. Let me check it because it's not on George's page. I mean, it's not really affecting the game. We, well, you know, no, we I mean, we either gain we go, the yeah. points together or we lose the points together. Georgia, Georgia has a uh, a tendency to not update their history. So, <laughs> <laughs> look, look D- David spent a lot of time with the Georgia Jawjacker, right? He knows what's going on <laughs> down there. Let's see. Consensus. Uh, unless there's a separate thing. I just clicked on thing and brought me to the National Football Foundation. Is that the. <laughs> No, it says Champ Bailey says College Football Hall of Fame. So I have conflicting reports. So well, I'm just wondering if it's the points. same thing. Is the National Football Foundation is that yeah, it's the College Football Hall of Fame, huh? Yeah. Hey. Right row. No, it does it's not huh. that important because you guys if you guys one had yes and one or one said champ and the other person right. said something else, then it would be better or different, but no, this is fine. Which is weird because a lot of Wikipedia pages are updated, you know, seconds after stuff happens. And, well, and obviously uh, some champs got updated by people who wanted to make sure people knew he was in. But obviously, maybe the. Well, let's whoever's... let's let's yell at the only Georgia Bulldog fan I know. Adam Spees, can you please go out there and update your your Georgia Bulldogs Wikipedia page, please? Yeah, you <laughs> trash person. <laughs> We know it's you, Adam. We know you're in control of it. Mr. Other, Skin, please. Other, underneath the accomplishment, you have hey, all the mis- He needs to put down the... Oh, crap. I can't remember. What was the cereal that... Uh, waffle, waffle Crisp. crisp. <laughs> yeah, put down your Waffle Crisp, Adam, and go update Wikipedia. Come on. And and put away the VHSs of Wild Things or whatever else you're looking at right now. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right. Well, so both teams getting their points because uh, maybe the, I don't know. I was going to take a shot at people in Georgia, but I'm not going to do that. I'm better than that. So both teams getting their points. Correct answer is Fran Tarkenton, Charlie, Trippy, and apparently Champ Bailey, too. So that brings us to question number three category. How bizarre. Every everyone remembers Leon Lett for his Super Bowl fumble. On Thanksgiving Day in 1993, Leon, Leon Lett struck again when he tried to recover a block kick that would have given Dallas the win against the Dolphins. Miami ended up recovering the ball by, after Leon's mistake. Who was the Dolphins kicker who got a second chance to win the game for the Dolphins? That's who you're talking about, right? Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah, we're checked in. All right, fairly kicked into Dickinson, checking in. I'll be there for you. You guys can talk it out. I think you have it, Josh. I think so, too. Yeah. I think it's Pete Stoyanovich, because right around that time, I can't remember what year. What year did Ace Ventura come out? The <laughs> first one was 93, 90, I think. 93 or 94. 93 or 94. Actually, I think it was 94. So, um, and he was the... He, oh, no, you know what? It was It was definitely 94, because... That he was the, he was the stand-in there. kicker. And uh, so, yeah, so I'm pretty sure that it's Pete Stoyanovich. So, we're checking in with him for 85 points. Okay, and fairly kicked in the Dickinson answer and wager, please. Uh, yeah, I've seen this clip about a billion times. It airs on every NFL Network special ever. Uh, any YouTube clip about football, it gets randomly played. This is Pete Stoyanovich. All right, yep. Pete Stoyanovich had two shots in a blizzard in Dallas because they got like two inches of snow. So both. <laughs> Both teams getting their points on that one. How many points did you guys wager on that one? Oh, 100. All right. So we have a lead change. After that question, fairly kicked in the Dickinson has 675, and I'll be there for you. 670. Oh, no. It all it all comes down to this. Sorry. <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> all right. Question number four, the category I want to be bad. Sometimes tanking works. Connor McDavid, Patrick Ewing. Sometimes it doesn't work. Tanking for Tua. Who is the prized prospect, all but guaranteed to go number one overall in the 2023 NHL draft? We can check in, Dave. I feel like pretty good about this. Actually, before we check in, you you 
you you nodded type what you think it is and we'll this makes my soul happy that marcus almost checked in immediately with a hockey question good here's the hidden hockey we're checked in barely kicked in the dickinson has checked in in record time i'll be there for you you guys can talk it out well congratulations gentlemen on your victory no, Josh is going to pull this. I can no, see it in his eyes. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. No, we're we're going to. Is there another stall brother coming? Like, I don't. I have no way to, to get to this. I I honestly don't either. No, no, no clue. No idea. And even throwing out a lucky when it comes to hockey is very, very difficult. Uh, yeah. To do. Yeah. A lucky bury. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> so. I got. I, I don't. I don't. I'm just. I don't think I've heard anything about any prospects for you know. I don't pay a lot of attention to the NHL draft. The, yeah, the last usually I... even even whoever the Wild take, I'm like, oh, okay, I hope he's good eventually. Yeah. So the last prospect I I heard anything about was that kid that the Rangers got a couple years ago, and I already forgot his name. So yeah, Pocaco or Laferriere. The Laferriere. Yeah. yeah. What was that first one again? Just for, just for my. <laughs> the middle name Boo. <laughs> um, I don't know, Josh. Beefy McWhat now? Uh, sure, we can check in with Beefy McWhat now because a uh, uh, defenseman, obviously, right? I would think so. Yeah, he's, I mean, obviously. he's pretty I mean, beefy. All right. You don't you don't get that nickname, you know. With scoring goals, you get that for you know being a menace on the defensive end. All right, and uh, how many points? Undo and over to fairly kicked in the Dickinson. Your answer and wager, please. For the record, Dave uh, also had this. Um, yeah, since you know, since we have a team now and they're starting to turn around, I. I pay attention to stuff. And one of the things when you just hop on ESPN plus and there's a random game on and you're in between like March madness games and they say, Oh, you know, this team's pretty bad, but they might have a shot at our answer. We checked in for 75 points with Connor Bedard. One team getting their points. The correct answer. Mick what now? Is Connor Bedard? Is that um, Eric's? Is that Eric's son? <laughs> I wish it was Mariners legend Eric. Oh, son. you! Oh, sorry. <laughs> whoever's whoever's doing this, I'm so sorry. That was a was... visceral reaction to the name Eric Bedard. How dare you? <laughs> is it wrong that I thought Eric Walling first? <laughs> <laughs> Eric Walling's son, Connor Bedard. <laughs> yes. No, that'd be Nolan Bedard. Just, just, you know. uh, this game has come to an end, and here are the final scores. After a great game, unable to pull up the the hidden hockey question, I'll be there. Finishes with five seventy, and today's clipboard captains of the game, who will be receiving the Jordan Love Award, fairly kicked in our Dickinson. Congratulations, gentlemen. <laughs> I oh man, I'm gonna jump in, Dave, because we don't we don't get to talk anymore at the end of these. But I do just want to say thank you to this podcast because the, there is no shot that before I did this with all of you, I ever would have known something like this. And like when you started saying the question, I'm like, oh my god, he's gonna ask about the guy everybody's taking for. Oh my god, I've heard the name Connor Bedard like like 25 times. Like I'm I know this. And then you asked it, and I was like, holy shit. I can't believe I'm about to check in immediately in a fourth quarter effing hockey question. So thank you. Anyways, Dave, you're you're amazing. This is so much fun. Go ahead. Hey, uh, no, I've, I'm going to give a shout out to Matt Doherty because uh, he told me that Eric was the one that was hosting this game. So I didn't study anything but hockey for probably like the last, I don't know, two, three weeks, which for someone that's never watched hockey, uh, outside of like a Milwaukee Admirals game, which let me tell you, riveting. Um, yeah, I that that was a little bit brutal for me, but I, I'm glad 
Marcus, that we wrapped up this game in the same way that we played it with a same wavelength type question. Both look at each other pointing and then typing the exact same thing at the exact same time. So this was awesome. And I, I, I absolutely loved playing with everyone today. So thank you, Scott. Thank you, Josh. And a big thank you to Marcus, who, again, gifted me a win. We couldn't get a shot off. K- kudos to you for for studying. Well, you did way more prep than, than we've ever done for this. So, so kudos to you for that. <laughs> Josh, that was amazing. We didn't get a shot off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we, we K-stated it. Yeah. Oh. To, put, to bookend this podcast. Marcus is the mad. The thing that makes me angry is a team that can't get a damn shot off at the end. We couldn't. We just couldn't uh, do it. Josh, Josh, we had a shot to be one and zero against an indie wrestler, and we blew uh, it. So, well, thank you, David, for coming on. It, it, it's it, it, good having you. Um, anything you want to say before we call it? I mean, just anything you want to plug with wrestling? I anything, massages, whatever you want to do. Famous <laughs> BJ's and whatever Only fans. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, I absolutely love being on here. A uh, big shout out. We got the backup award, but Jordan Love is that guy. Uh, watching him play, he does look good. And I know that sounds rough, but let me tell you, I've been on Jordan Love's uh, side of things for two plus years now. So Aaron Rodgers, go back in your cave. And uh, yeah, definitely we are now part of the famous BJ team. Uh, Marcus. Yes, I accept this honor with, with all my uh, loins. All right. All right. <laughs> well, thank you again, David. And on behalf of Josh, Scott, Marcus, and myself, we'd like to say thanks for listening to the Bench Warmers Trivia Podcast. And until next time, we'll keep the bench warm. Famous BJ's. Josh, end the recording. Before it goes off the rails. Shout uh, out to uh, more off the rails. That ball hit high and deep. Stretch. Stretch. Get on back there. They look up. You can put it on the board. Yes. Yes. Into deep left center for Mitchell. And we'll see you tomorrow night. That great music you're listening to is by Justin Nozick. Thanks to him for producing that music for us. You've been listening to the Bench Warmers Trivia Podcast. Make sure to check us out on all of our social media. We are at Bench Warmers TP. They're coming, Josh. Hold on. Sure <laughs> I'm waiting. I got to make sure I don't send the answers. You could. I'm patient. Don't worry. I'm not. Good <laughs> <laughs> answers. Oh, sorry. Barry spelled improperly. It's Burry Bonds on my sheet here. <laughs> well, I bet he's the one. It wasn't. <laughs> also, the way Mark McGuire spelled it. Is this Lizzie McGuire's dad, Mark McGuire? Listen, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't fight with spell check if it wants to send me a certain way. It's also Ryan R Y N E, but that's neither. Here. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. Well, Larry Walker's. You got that one. Right, though. All right. Yeah. Good. Listen, I, there's no more coming through the chat now. If you're going to tear it apart like this. Keep my writing. You heard my feelings, <laughs> and now I'm not posting the answers. <laughs> <laughs>